Boom Studios recently published the first of a four-part Expanse miniseries, bridging the gap between seasons four and five. In this video, I'll recap the events of this first issue, where Avasarala struggles with a new project on Luna, and Bobby discovers a shadowy organization which may finally unite Earth, Mars, and the Belt. On Mars, Bobby Draper's phone stirs her from an unexpected slumber at her desk. Ever since accepting Avasarala's job offer, she has worked tirelessly, and unfortunately fruitlessly, toward busting the Martian weapons trade. She answers the phone and arranges another weapons deal for that night. So much for one night to myself, she thinks, but one of these has got to pay off. I and the prize, Draper. Discover, infiltrate, keep weapons away from the terrorists. Easy, right? As Bobby leaves her room, she bumps into an old friend, Cal. They try to recall the last time they saw each other. I was besting you on a target range the last time we spoke, Bobby says. You still a lousy shot, Cal? Probably, Cal responds, but I haven't had any reason to find out for a long time. My life took another path. Mine too, lately, Bobby quietly adds. Meanwhile on Luna, Christian Avasarala listens to a message from Holden. He lets her know they received the final payment for the Illus job and thanks her. Then, one of her subordinates arrives to provide a progress update on their latest project, though she is severely disappointed on his definition of progress. It seems their efforts to terraform Luna are moving slowly. I admit it doesn't look like much yet, the man says, but perhaps if I showed you the excavations we're doing beneath the surface. Avasarala remains unconvinced. I warned you not to try to convince me this is something it's not, she tells him. If you want more funding, you have to show results. I should probably be telling Bobby Draper the same thing, Avasarala adds silently, but at least she respects me enough to give me the truth, especially when it's unpleasant. Then she is relieved to hear a familiar voice. Madam Avasarala? Ashanti calls from the doorway. Oh, hello, Ashanti, Christian replies. Why didn't you tell me you were coming up here? I tried, Mom, Ashanti answers, but you never stayed on the call long enough for me to give you the details. Christian apologizes and explains, I've just been so busy. Working here is not like working on Earth, you know. Christian walks her daughter through the halls to the coffee room as they catch up. Once they arrive, Ashanti reveals why she came to this godforsaken place, as Avasarala calls it. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Ashanti explains. I wanted you to look me in the eyes and tell me that you're doing okay. Because it isn't just this place that's different. It can't be easy to go from being secretary general to, well, doing this. Christian reassures her daughter that although circumstances have changed, she is still working toward the same things. Then her daughter gets even more honest. I just thought, and I know dad hoped, that you'd have more time now. I mean, this post is largely ceremonial, isn't it? Couldn't you? No, Christian interrupts her daughter. No, it's not ceremonial, Ashanti asks, or no, you don't want to spend more time with us. Christian reassures her that of course she wants to spend more time with her family. I'll be damned if I allow that to change just because I've been exiled to this rock, she adds. On Mars, Bobby continues a reunion of her own. Her and Cal catch up over a drink. After some pleasantries, he decides to talk business. Don't let this get around, he tells Bobby, but I've got some prospects that might... Well, let's say it's something that's going to be big for everyone involved. A long-term investment. Bobby asks Cal if he's working for Mars, and he says no. Is he working for Earth? No. The belt? Not them either. Once Bobby is thoroughly confused, Cal asks, Did it never occur to you that all of those can be won again? Under the right circumstances, of course. Sure, Bobby answers and sarcastically adds, How could that possibly go wrong? Cal explains that it won't be perfect, but asks, Isn't it time that someone at least tried? Bobby concedes the point, and Cal continues, Look, Bobby, I'm a businessman, but I hope to do good business too, you know? Making money doesn't have to mean doing evil. With that, Bobby gets up to leave, but first, Cal provides his contact info and offers her a job in his vague endeavor. Though he adds, That's far from the only reason I hope you call me. After Bobby leaves, Cal approaches someone at the bar and apologizes for keeping him waiting. The man asks Cal about his meeting with Bobby. Cal tells him that he believes Bobby could be a real asset to the consortium. On a train heading toward the meeting spot for Bobby's next weapons deal, 
she reflects on her meeting with Cal and the seemingly impossible endeavor to crack the weapons trade. Is meeting with all these tiny dealers worth it? She seems to be getting nowhere. Also, what did Cal mean by good business? And is it something Bobby could be a part of? Then she reassures herself, get a grip, Draper. You just miss being part of something you never had to question. As Bobby enters the warehouse to meet her next dealer, she sends Avasarala a message. Bobby explains that she hopes the little fish she's meeting with can lead to bigger fish, but she's starting to doubt it. There seem to be so many lately. It also feels like someone has set up a bunch of little stings, as though she and Avasarala aren't the only ones trying to uncover weapon smugglers. Something doesn't feel right. Avasarala receives the message once Bobby has already entered the warehouse and gone dark. Frantically, she sends a reply. Bobby, if you get this before you start out, stand down for tonight. She explains that there is too much risk and they need to avoid becoming targets themselves. She concludes by saying, there's something very much not right on Luna too, but you've got to give me time to figure out what it is. Inside, Bobby meets with her dealer and is immediately disappointed by the lackluster supply provided by him. So she presses him to put her in touch with a bigger fish. She offers a bonus if he'll introduce her to his supplier. He refuses and explains he already made that deal with someone else. She presses for information and offers that maybe they can work together. Hmm, well they are recruiting, the man says, and did say I'd get a bonus if I sign up someone useful. Then, he echoes Cal's words, but they try to do a good business, understand? He is interrupted by a distant clanking, followed by an explosion as three armed figures storm the warehouse. They open fire and Bobby runs while the dealer fires back, killing one of the men. They swiftly return fire, executing the dealer. The two remaining men search for Bobby as she hides behind a crate. You might as well come out, one of the men shouts because you are not getting away with killing one of us, no matter what. Bobby nurses a bullet wound on her right arm as she puts on a helmet and makes her way to the back exit. By the time the men arrive at the airlock, Bobby is gone. All that remains is a trail of her blood leading out to the desolate landscape of Mars. Hurry and suit up, the man says to his partner. We don't want Mars killing her before we get a crack. And that's where issue one wraps up. Let me know what you thought of the issue in the comments, where you think it's heading, and how it will lead into what we've seen of season five. Personally, I'm impressed with the issue's focus on character development, giving us a better look at Avasarala and Bobby's mindsets prior to the current season. And if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon. That way you'll get notified as we post more Expanse-related content including a similar video for issue two once it's released, and reviews of all future episodes. Finally, if you enjoyed this experience, we have similar comic book adaptations for Fire and Stone, a series traversing the Prometheus, Alien, and Predator franchises. Click the card in the upper right corner to check it out. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next One Take.